Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Waking Mars. So this game came out on iOS. Yeah, I know. Ah, oh, no, it's another iOS port. Please, God. Um, I'm sure you'll be fine. Relax, Lord. Overreactions. It's brought to you by a company called Tiger Style, and this was pretty successful on iOS, which is unusual because... It was at least claimed by a number of people to actually be a decent game, and a lot of the stuff that's successful on iOS is, tends to be absolutely awful. The question is, is it actually any good, or was it just a bunch of hype? Because I set my standards pretty low for iOS games. Honestly, a lot of them are very poorly designed. They are done so in such a way as to... Here it is, Leon. The last known location of Octo. He proceeded further and was never heard from again. Can you see Octo's camera module? Should be nearby. But you know, it is getting kind of dangerous down there, so maybe you should just head back instead. Use your map to return to the outpost quickly. We'll regroup and evaluate. As I was saying before I was interrupted by the helpful person, it very well might be a case that I set my standards very low when it comes to iOS games, so when something comes along that is just better than usual stuff, it's very easy to get carried away and think, oh my god, this is incredible, it's amazing. When in reality, it actually kind of isn't. So, what is it all about? Well, Waking Mars is a Mars exploration game whereby you have discovered various... I would say plant life, but the AI in the game would whine at me and say it's clearly not a plant, go away. But they're pretty much plants, right? And you discover this plant life and you have to make your way through Mars by planting a bunch of stuff, by essentially stimulating the ecosystem. Yeah. A little bit crazy, I know. I'm gonna jump back up to the outpost as they actually asked me to do. I don't know if that's even remotely helpful. So, what do you think about Leth Cavern? It is a place taken from a dream. How lucky we are to have been chosen for this mission. But I am very concerned about structural integrity. We have been reckless. You're talking about that acid slime? I've got some new data. I noticed it has a distinct chemical fingerprint, so I wrote a little solver to find source locations. I used a second-order approximation for the diffusion functions, which should be accurate enough. You agree? Uh, yes. So, check this out. This is derived from Octo's report. The slime was already here, even back then. Here's what it looks like now. Even distribution, much higher density. So for the past eight months, the slime has been traveling through rock and reproducing. Burst of activity was caused by my actions today? Definitely. Turns out it's triggered by compounds the halide release. You grew the halide, the acid started dripping. This acid is incredibly corrosive too. The cave is basically dissolving away. It's crazy. Ooh, there's more. You remember those strange readings we noticed when we landed? I used the subsurface shallow radar and I'm pretty sure this is a body of liquid water. But eight months ago, it was mostly empty space. Maybe a bit of ice? An underground reservoir has simply... appeared? Looks that way. This is awesome, right, Leong? So much to research. This is worrisome. It seems our impact is causing rapid changes that would not occur naturally. The cerebrain are the cause. Perhaps... We should dig around them rather than continue raising biomass. We must reconsider our approach to the mission. We... I assume it is not possible to reach Amani. We are too deep to obtain a signal from base camp. <sighs> and it is just us two. I wish your natural language module was working properly. 
Thank you. I am very abilities for human dialogue. Good news. Scans report that you are awake and have suffered without permanent injury. Is there a passage back to the outpost accessible from here? Yes, accessible to air particles. A human is too large. Then I will have to search for some other way out of the cave. You no longer contain any protocaps. Yes, but I can grow my own. Starting with just one seed, I can obtain as many as I need. I have confirmed your logic. Anyway, that was a, a fairly lengthy discussion, needless to say. And is that Claptrap? I'm pretty sure that is. That sounds very much like Claptrap. Could very well be the same actor. So, the whole idea of growth in the ecosystem is pretty much what this game is based around. So, you can see up here you've got these plant-like life forms. You can collect their seeds. I currently have two kinds. This green one and this blue one. The blue one is essentially water. And it will also interact with other plants. So, as you can see here, this plant's actually been watered. The stuff that this is spitting out actually affects this plant right here and it grows the biomass in an area up to the top right you'll see the biomass the amount you need to bypass the area is indicated and it can go up to five stars if you so desire this organic matter exhibits no current biological activity it may be a sessile remnant left over from a deceased life form similar to a tree trunk perhaps yes yes indeed so I wonder if there's anything you can really do. You could try watering it, I suppose. No, that does absolutely nothing. Should pop up and get another water seed. We might need it later on. Now, in order to bypass the obstacles, as I said, you gather enough biomass in the area to open these sort of organic gateways. The cere cerebrin, or ce I think they're called. And... That really is the gist of the game. Now, what makes the game interesting is the way that the various life forms will actually interact. Now, I certainly assume there's probably something I have to do here. As to what? Well, that's a different matter entirely. I'm currently looking for some fertile ground. You can often find it around on the ceilings, the floors, or just anywhere in the caves. And you can utilize that in order to grow things. Or alternatively, we could just head down here. There we go. I have received another transmission from Octo Hardware. Here is the image from the camera module. Hmm. These could not be rock formations, could they? I know they all point upwards like stalagmites. Please note this scale reference. It is likely this is a fighter. Then these are very large structures. Fascinating. Please indicate the location of this signal on my map, Art. So let's grow something, shall we, and see what happens. So if I plant that, just very easily select it and toss it out of the mouse, and then you'll see something is created. Now, what I could then do, and this is kind of set up in a fairly logical fashion, if I want to increase the biomass in this area, I want this to be a happy little plant. And the way that I do that is most likely to plant something which will benefit it and preferably not screw up. Thank you very much. There we go. Toss it through there. That should create one of the plants that has a tendency of spitting out those water seeds. And what will then probably happen is you see the biomass is added on. It will probably grow a water seed, spit it out, and hopefully spit it out in the general direction. Well, almost. I can water it myself if I want, but eventually what's probably going to happen is that this plant's going to water the other plant, and there's going to be some interaction there. And this is a very basic form of what, as far as I can tell, the ecosystem seems to do later on in the game. It seems like the whole thing could... See, there you go, there's, there's a perfect example of it. Could very well develop in a very complex manner with the different life forms interacting in different ways, which is what makes the game really, really intriguing. I think there's all sorts of potential there. It's not so much a puzzle solving game, although I suppose to some degree it is. And there's mo it's mostly just straight up logic. It's like, I'll plant this here and then plant that here, and that's going to increase the biomass. But it seems like you can also just bypass these areas very easily. The amount of biomass you actually need is actually not very high at all. You can get past the point without any issues just by planting a couple of plants. If you want to fully five-star it, then you have to create an ecosystem that is as efficient as possible. 
I'm going to toss something up there. I mean, I could just plant a green seed there, but I think I would do much, much better if I were to plant a blue seed and then have these guys spit water all over the place that can then enhance the plants around this area, which is a pretty cool mechanic as far as I'm concerned. It's very, very cool indeed. I'm going to hang around, just wait for them to toss out a couple more green seeds. There we go, because I might need those a little bit later on. In fact, I might just water this myself. There you go. Have some of that. Excellent. Now, the interesting thing about the story is that all of this meddling is actually causing problems within the planet itself. Hell, what the? Alright. Speaking of causing problems within the planet itself, now there's some crazy bastards running all over the place. So clearly I've done something horrible. Now, you can die in this game. You've got to watch out for environmental hazards, so best not to get stabbed by falling rocks or anything along those lines. The game's description on Steam says that eventually you'll have to make a decision which determines the fate of the planet, so... The prior observation regarding organic matter is erroneous. Despite an extensive period of inactivity, this previously unknown life form of Mars is able to exhibit measurable livelihood. Oh, do you have any settings to control the frequency of your dialogue? Yes, I am currently in normal mode. There is also verbose and terse. Hmm. Thank you. Indeed. I'd probably want to leave it in verbose, because it seems like some of this voice acting is quite amusing at times. It's like a less irritating version of Claptrap. So the whole principle behind the game seems really, really intriguing. The question is, do the mechanics actually keep up with it? Do the controls keep up with it? Does the presentation keep up with it? Well, I can say, like, voice acting-wise, it's pretty good, and the music's really nice, but graphically, then, the game is almost downright hideous. I mean, it's not a very good-looking game at all. I think one of the more hideous games that I've played this year, it's comparable to something like A Valley Without Wind. It might arguably be even worse than that, because A Valley Without Wind does a whole bunch of really high-contrast, weird stuff, and the whole way that the game is designed is odd. And honestly, I mean, the, the overall result of that was to create a very ugly looking game. The developers even acknowledge that that is a problem that has put off a great deal of people. Now, in this, it's not like they've gone for some weird style. It's just not a very good looking one. And more to the point, stuff like the animation quality, as you can probably see there with the movement, is it, it's pretty dire. It's also quite easy to get stuck on terrain as well. Now, that can be solved, of course, by the fact that you have a jetpack. Although, controlling the jetpack is not exactly a joyful experience. It's not really a problem, it's just it's not really all that well done. The movement seems stilted, and I don't know if that has anything to do with it being an iOS port. Probably not. I mean, as, an iOS, as iOS ports go, it's actually pretty good. I'll just increase the biomass in this area. I can actually just... Toss a couple of water seeds and that should do the trick and then we can go on to the next area. I'm not really overly concerned about anything else. Well, I guess actually I can't go on to the next area. I haven't increased the biomass too much. I'm interested to see what these creatures actually end up doing in the long run. I wonder if it's possible to like, chase them up to somewhere useful, but I don't know yet. Now what you can do is check the research and try and figure out what's going on. As you can see, this is the fighter life form. And then you'll see when the local environment reaches biomass level 2, they increase the habitability and then they, they kind of run around. We don't know what they eat. You've got to kind of research all of this stuff and figure out what the different life forms do. Which, you know, and all in all, it, it is a very intriguing principle. But presentation-wise, in regards to the gameplay, I think that's where the game starts to stumble just a little bit. Presentation-wise, as I said, it, it's kind of ugly and... Honestly, when it comes down to the animation quality and the overall way the game handles, it's not great. It's, it's certainly playable. It never gets in the way of playing the game, which is perhaps the most important thing. It's just a, a great shame, I feel, that if you're going to create a game that's about managing an ecosystem and discovering all these crazy new forms of life, then generally speaking, your presentation's got to be pretty good, right? You, you would think so. You would think so. I wonder if these things eat these. Aha. Uh -huh. Maybe. No. Is it? Is it eating? I think it might be eating. So, there we go. I guess we can actually feed these things. Yes, we can. Alright, so... I'm not, I'm not sure what ended up happening there, but I'm gonna feed them. There we go. 
So what would probably end up happening is if these things started spitting out seeds and these these guys moved around, they'd find the seeds, they'd eat the seeds, and... There are too few fertile terrains in this chamber to open the cerebrate. Yes, I must find some other way to raise biomass. Attention! The Vita page of our research log may provide usefulness. Very well, might. Grow more things. Well, these guys seem to be casting off their shells as I feed them. Let's have a look at the fighter there. What is their diet? They eat seeds. How do they reproduce? After they eek, they eek. Wow. Let's try that one again. After they eat, fighter produce an egg, which quickly hatches into a mature new fight. Do any other life forms consume the fighter? That's a good question. Well, let's just keep feeding them then for the moment. And there. This is increasing the biomass in this area. Excellent. And I should then be able to bypass that, as you can see. <laughs> so, let's talk about just the, the notion of the game in general. Because I've already come to the conclusion that presentation-wise, that's, that's easily the weakest part of the game. I'm, I'm just going to skip past this bit. Anyway. I've already come to the conclusion that the presentation is definitely the weakest part of the game. The strongest part, of course, is just how unique an idea it is to run around caves under Mars, discovering different life forms, how they tick and how they interact. And the interaction is one of by far the coolest things I've seen in a very, very long time. The notion that something emergent could pop out of this is a very, very intriguing idea, something that excites me greatly. That up there drips acid. Any attempt to plant anything down there just simply will not work. I could neutralize the acid, at least for a time, by using these water seeds. And then there was all sorts of different life forms that eat other life forms in the area. And I'm just thinking, like, later on in the game, there are all sorts of incredibly crazy ideas, potentially. What a cool thing. What a great idea this game is based on. What an interesting and unique and fairly innovative notion. And well executed, even though presentation sucks. You know, it's the art style is pretty poor. And overall, graphically, it's just not a very nice looking game. Even after all of that, it simply comes down to the fact that this is really unique and interesting. And it's not, it's hard to really identify what it is. I mean, it's kind of Metroidvania-ish. There's a bit of backtracking and exploration. It's an exploration-based 2D, you can even call it a platformer. There's really no platforms. I, I don't even know. All right, let's, let's plant it here in the acidic environment then, shall we? I'll plant that one there. All right, so these guys really, really seem to like the acid. The question is, what do they do after that? Are they going to try and kill me? They might. Well, it's added biomass to the area. So, yeah, I'm curious to look at the research and see how these actually react. Well, we don't really know much about that. How do they reproduce, I wonder? Are they going to try and eat me? Oh, oh, oh. Yep, they're going to try and eat me. Okay, so th these things are, are kind of vicious. So, I want to be a little bit careful. I'm just really intrigued to keep going on in this game. It's, it's something that I haven't really seen before. And as a result, it's getting me very, very interested extremely interested in the notions that this game has to offer and the overall design process and I'm kind of hoping that this company can get around to making another game and you know getting the the art style and nailing down the presentation standpoint because it's just really really kind of awesome and unique and I was just killed by a giant acidic plant because you know why not welcome to Mars enjoy your stay biatch I guess is throwing water at it help uh, I don't know. No, it, it doesn't seem to. It actually doesn't care at all. I'm going to plant there and just... Yeah, it'll be a little bit quick. There we go. You don't have any weapons, per se. You've only got the seeds. Kind of pull back. There we go. Does it have any vulnerabilities? I'm intrigued to know. It can be damaged or destroyed by significant impacts and conditions such as extreme temperature or alkalinity. All right, so... Essentially, if the cave is damaged and parts of the cave are damaged, then you can make them retreat. That's kind of awesome. This is one of these only games that has really made me feel like... Not so much even a badass explorer, just in general, an explorer. 
It's like, I don't really have any abilities. I have to use my wits and use my intelligence and do research. I'm a scientist, essentially. I'm not a badass. I'm not fighting any alien life. I'm actually trying to grow it. I mean, what, what an intriguing idea. And how well executed. And I'm just interested to see how these two interact. I and mean, how is this plant going to interact with that one? And what's going to be happening later on in the game when there's all sorts of different plants going on? Well, as far as I know, I mean, it's not extreme alkalinity could do something about it. It seems a little bit scared of it, actually. I'm surprised they're not fighting each other. Oh, hello. All right, so it's had water. Hmm. There's some kind of weird behavior for this plant as well. Picking up loose objects from the range and throwing them about. The response can be leveraged to distract a... That's so cool. Ah, this is... As I said, you know, I was I was put off by its hideous exterior, per se, but one should never judge a book by its cover. Absolutely not, because this is a game that's got an awful lot going for it. I'm going to grab another one of those, probably toss it down there. That'll allow me to bypass that and go through the next area. And I have a feeling that if you were to, I suppose, take this game apart and look at its DNA, what you'd see is... Essentially a puzzle game. You know, it's like, hey, it's, it's gonna... Things interact in a certain way. Please don't eat me. There we go. Stuff interacts in a certain way. That, that's a basic puzzle game, right? Well, yes, but it's the fact that the whole world seems like it's alive. And there's all of these crazy plants and creatures that you have to interact with. You know, that is that is strange. That is, that is unique and interesting. Oh, never mind. I'm not, clearly not going to get past that. So... As far as I'm concerned, you should be having a look at this game. This is really, really interesting indeed. You have to at least consider the possibility that even if you're not a puzzle fan or indeed into platformers or anything like that, this game might be for you. If you like science, if you like interesting characters, if you like interesting interactions in a very weird alien ecosystem, if you like solving problems in a very organic and almost somewhat unpredictable way, then I think Waking Mars very well might be something that you want to be looking into. The game is available on Steam for $10, 10 Aussie dollars. £6.99 and €9.99. It's also available on iOS for a cheaper price. And it is essentially the same game. I mean, the PC port is fine. It's It's got some settings, as you can see. You can change the difficulty around. You can reconfigure the keys, and you can mess around with the resolution and things like that. Obviously, since the game is borderline hideous, you don't really need to worry too much about the graphics style. But I think you should be paying this game some attention, folks. I really do. This is something really different and well executed and deceptive. I was expecting just a, you know, another physics-based puzzle platformer and what I got was the opportunity to explore an alien world and interact with it in a very different way. And I, I look for experiences like that in gaming. And as, as should you all, every now and again. This is something that is worth your time. I'm just going to cheese it past there. There we go. My name's been Total Biscuit. Take a look at Waking Mars by Tiger Style. Currently available on Steam and all good digital distribution platforms as well as, of course, iOS. I'll see you next time.